He's been performing here since 1973. The great Johnny Red's on. <laughs> this fella if people know him they all love him he's been a fine servant of entertainment in northamptonshire for decades decades the luftwaffe did his stage lighting when he started that's how long ago he's played every club every pub weekenders festivals here around the uk around the world and he has just released his last album as johnny and the jailbirds he'll be at high and ferris boxing day afternoon the very fine johnny red hello johnny Morning, Bernie. How are you? Yeah, we're good, thanks. Is this the last time in the recording studio, then, as a band? Yeah, I'll be, people think I'm, pack, I'm, pack, I'm packing up, but I'm not. I'm, I'm still doing the solo and I'm still doing the band. But, uh, yeah, as far as writing goes, this was uh, uh, oh, a labour of love after we started, uh, you know, just before the lockdown in October 2019. Can you believe it? And we only finished it about a month ago. I <laughs> know. It's so hard for musicians. A, you've got the problems of getting into the studio together, and then you've got one eye on what the news is saying in terms of your gigs. You've just started gigging again, and now yeah. you don't know if you're going to get any traction to it, do you? No, it was all unsafe, wasn't it? I mean, now we've been vaccinated, we feel a lot better, but at that time there was no vaccination, and um, things weren't looking good, and we did not go back in the studio again, even if we could. So it was. Um, it just went on and on and on. So I wrote 15 tracks, and I thought, well, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna chuck them in the bin. I want to record these. So we just carried on and just waited till the, till we could get back in the studio. That's one of the things that you have always done: original songs. This has 15 of them, as you say. Um, have you met much resistance over the years to playing new songs? 
Um, well, my, my, the one I wrote with Richie, uh, Roll On Clickety Clack, is more or less one of the... There's about four or five songs that are up there at the top. Yeah. Dance songs, and that's one of them. So, uh, no, I don't know, really. Um, we still do... We still pack the dance floors and everything. I mean, I, a lot of people don't really know some rare rock and roll now. They don't really know... If you played a Johnny Burnett song to a lot of people in some clubs, I'm saying, they probably wouldn't know it. Um, so uh, I, I, I think when I play one of mine, if it's catchy, a good, good chorus and a good beat to dance to, they'll dance to it, and they yeah. do. And they do, and they love them. You know, this album's selling really well now. But, uh, yeah, I understand that, as a lot of bands do stick to covers, and that's the only way they can work. And I do understand that, but I won't do it in the band. I do covers in my solo, but I won't do it in the band, and, and I never will. Uh, if I have to pack up... Uh, if I don't get any gigs because I'm doing my own stuff, then I pack up. You You'll know? never pack up. People love you. What are you talking about? And it's 48 years. You've got to cling to the record until at least the 50s. 48 <laughs> years since you I formed know. the Jailbirds. When you moved up here, yeah? Yeah, I moved up here in 1973. But Where did you come from? I came from uh, Charlton in uh, uh, Charlton in south-east London. Yeah. Uh, you can see I've been up here a long time because I would have said Charlton, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but um, now I came up and it's the best thing I ever did. We had the Railway Club in Wellingborough and all the bands I'd been seeing in London, um, they, were, uh, they were coming up to the Railway Club and it was just up the road from me because I lived in Wellingborough then. Um, so it was great. It was, uh, and there, every club put a band on. So I started Johnny and the Jailbirds in about '73, something like that. Did you put an advert out? Is that how the story goes? Yeah, I put an advert. I, put, I was on the front page of the Evening Telegraph at the time, and um, we were looking for a rhythm guitarist and a drummer, and we had loads of offers. Um, a lot of them didn't look like rockers. The long hair and everything, but it wasn't the done thing then to look like a rock. You just, if you p could play it, you probably got in a band, you know. And um, the thing was, it was um, everyone was playing rock and roll, every club, every pub, and, and you worked continuously. It was fantastic. Well, here's the thing it was only 15, 16 years since rock and roll back then, which is the equivalent today of looking back to the music of 2005, isn't it? I'd, that's right, yeah. It's but it strange, is. isn't it? Yeah. It is bizarre. It's still pretty fresh, because you had the second time... Well, the Teddy Boys were still about. When I started in... One of the songs on the album, um, Saturday Night, um, Teddy Boy Saturday Night, that's... Uh, that, that's uh, about the fishmonger's arms in Wood Green. I started to go to Wood Green and uh, I saw uh, all the bands there, Shaking Stevens and the Sunsets, Freddie Fingers Leaf, obviously came from, down from Northampton, and, yeah. um, to play there, and uh, Flying Saucers and all that, and that's where I got into rock and roll. There, and that's when I wrote that um, uh, the Teddy Boy Saturday Night song on the album. That's exactly what it was about. It was a real rough time then you wouldn't dare look at anybody especially if you was just going to be in a teddy boy like i did and these older teds were looking at you <laughs> and they still do and when i would gig you know i don't do them because i'm not very good at doing them but when i would do uh, uh, rock and roll gigs they would come to the side of the stage and look really threateningly at me, you know? <laughs> really threateningly, and I was so scared. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't, my first gig away from home was down at the 2J's club in Braintree in Essex, and I played Leroy, and as you know, Leroy's got a saxophone br break in it. Well, I didn't have a saxophone break, so we finished the song, and about three teddy boys come up to me, and they were first time around town, and they said, have you ever <laughs> played that song again without a sax? And I won't tell you what they said. I, I thought, yeah, I knew what they were like, because I'd been in the, uh, Wood Green, they thought I was from North. Well, you know, I didn't just come down from the stick sort of thing, you know. Yeah. But yeah. I'd been in London. I've been in London all that. I knew that what they were going to do and say and everything. But I uh, didn't really. Um, uh, it didn't really. I didn't really care. And we carried on and done our, our set, and we went down well. You know, I think we got rebooked as well. So the Teddy Boy thing, such an interesting phenomenon, isn't it? Because of course, rock and roll, the music that you love, is an American model. But the Ted movement, that's very British. They don't have Teds in America, do they? 
No, no, it's just the, it's the Edwardian dress and stuff and everything, isn't it? The yeah. Teddy's got the Teds and that. But, um, yeah, it is. It's just a, a British thing, and uh, and it still goes on, you know? It still goes on. The Teddy Boy Weekend that we done in Blackpool um, a couple of months ago, packed solid, you know, with Teddy Boy, young and old and... Some who can't dance anymore, and some kids there are going crazy. You know, it's ridiculous. It's it's good that it's still going. You know, I think so. And you had the proper look. I mean, you really did. You've still got good hair. You've got good genes, haven't you, in your body? I've still got my teeth. <laughs> I, I've still got me, my teeth. I look after. I, I, I was I looked after those as a kid. I had a brace on for about. Oh, I think I had a brace top and bottom for about uh, six years. So I really look after them. Trying to try and avoid people that are going to punch me. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so where's this taken you since 1973 when you formed the band? Um, you you've sold a lot of copies of uh, Rolling Dice, the new record, to Italy, uh, Spain. They've been good to you. They've given you success those places over the years, haven't they? Yeah, I'm, I'm supposed to be going back to... Uh, I got my favourite place, and the best place... At, well, the place that books me more than anywhere is Finland. Is it? Uh, yeah, it's fantastic. I mean, really good. We went over there when it was huge, rock and roll, and the kids there, we'd have 3,000 in a gymnasium uh, uh, for a rock and roll gig. The kids were about 13, 14, 15, and they were all big quiffs. They all had big quiffs and everything. It was crazy. I was over there with Crazy Cavern, um, uh, and the rhythm rockers, and they were like the Beatles over there, I've got to say. Uh, and, and, and we got the same treatment. You know, if you went too f uh, near the front of the stage, you get dragged off or something. You know, it's crazy. I, I, I had all that for about a week and uh, about ten days. It was crazy. Couldn't go anywhere. We, I had to have a, uh, some bodyguards. If we want to go to the loo, you'd have to have a bodyguard to take you and, go, <laughs> and bring you back. And then I came back and done the railway club. No one took any notice. <laughs> <laughs> Now, Thank that's not true. People love your stuff. Alan's listening to you in Bristol, says, I grew up on his Out on Bail album. I watched him live loads in the late 70s and the early 80s. So ah, oh, that could be it. Alan Wilson. I'm not quite sure. Yeah, they love your stuff. They absolutely yeah, love yeah, it. I know. Uh, it, it, people do, and this album's been selling really well. It's sh when the pre-orders, I've never done a pre-order, but... Because I've got the shop in Lou in Cornwall, where you know very well, probably. Yep. So um, how come Cornwall came into your life? Because it's so bizarre that you can move down there when you can to sell stuff from the shop. Is yeah, odd. I've got. I had it when we had um, the, we we started the Thunderbird Club. Me and Roger in the nineties. That was one of the most successful clubs in the country. That was uh, um, incredible. Four hundred people on a Saturday night in Wellingborough at the Embankment Club there. Um, and he was uh, the owner of uh, Fat Willie Surf Shack. Do you remember those? OK, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah and I had, um, I had two shops, one in Mevergissi and one in Lou. Um, we printed them here, and, um, and that's how it started. Then that sort of, like, faded away a bit, and uh, I started doing Old Guy's Raw <laughs> as a product from America. Um, and it's great. It sells really well. So Good it's uh, Good Yeah, man. so I've got a shop in Lou still. And that's um, that's how you can get the album because I'm using that website to sell the album. That's why I can get sort of worldwide uh, sales. Um, so where do people go to buy it then? Rolling Dice, the name of the album from Joining the Jailbirds. Where are we heading, people? To where yeah. do we go? Well, I've got some obviously on me every time I do a gig. Yeah. Uh, whether it's so you'd be selling them at High. I mean, you're there at the uh, WMC on Boxing Day afternoon, aren't you, in High and Ferris? Yeah, uh, yeah. High and Working, High and Ferris Working Men's Club. Uh, a Boxing Day afternoon. I think it's one till five, something like that. Yeah. Um, not too sure about that. I think it is. Yeah. One till four, love. One till. One four. till four. Oh, I'm doing an extra an hour, extra hour with it. <laughs> um, uh, and you can buy it from www. And it's O G R. That's old guy's rule. It's www. O G R Lou L O O E. Dot com. Uh, okay. But if you want to just don't bother with that. Just put old guy's rule Lou. In a in a uh, in Google and it'll come up straight away. Beautiful, and we're going to play. Uh, I saw the world change, and this is uh, inspired by your club and a meeting that you had in Wellingborough, isn't it? Yeah, we booked uh, DJ Fontana, the drummer from El uh, who joined Elvis in 1954 and made a big difference. Uh, 
Um, and he was uh, he was there, and uh, I just went up to him and I I said to him, "You must have saw, you must have seen the world change." He looked to me a good, bit gone out, I must say, and I, and I said, "No, you must have seen the world change, sitting behind Elvis and watching everything change in front of you, whether it was television studio or uh, uh, you know just a, a gig, uh, anything." And uh, he sort of like more or less agreed with me then, and uh, I wrote this song. It's like I saw the world change, and um, it's all about him sitting behind Elvis Presley. They used to call him the Memphis Flash in those days, watching yeah, yeah. the world change. Well, and I, po- I I sent it to his wife, the little video we did with the song, and she w- she loved it, and she was sharing it all over the place. So beautiful. that's good. Well, let's yeah. play it now from uh, Rolling Dice, joining the Jailbirds, and I saw the world change. Merry Christmas, Johnny. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. Bernie, thank you. Meeting in Wellenberg with DJ Fontana, Elvis's drummer. I saw the world change from Rolling Dice from Johnny and the Jailbirds. If you type in your search engine, Old Guys Rule, Lou, L-O-O-E, that'll take you to the website to back a copy for Christmas. 